So now y'all come into my kitchen. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome to cooking today. Happy fall. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite. Today, I'm making something that to me is just super signature fall. No, I'm not gonna say something pumpkin. We're gonna do that later. <laughs> We're gonna do that one, for, that one in November. But I always make an apple pie on kind of the first wave of really good crisp air in the fall. There is something about it. I know that apple pie is, you can do it for 4th of July because it's all American. I know that you can do it any time of the year really, but to me, that warm cinnamon and the apples and that yummy glaze and a good crust. We're making a Dutch apple pie with a good crumb on the top. All of that just to me feels like crisp fall day. And so that's what we're gonna make today. And we're gonna do a caramel, a salted caramel sauce that you can either drizzle over the whole pie, you can serve it on the side, you could do Dutch apple pie a la mode, you know, with ice cream and put it, put that caramel sauce on your ice cream, whatever you wanna do, eat it by the spoonful. If you've been around here, you're not gonna be surprised to hear me say that that's what I do. <laughs> I might sneak a spoonful here and there of homemade caramel sauce, cause it's just delicious. So that is what we're making today. I think you're gonna love this, y'all, I really do. And it's really simple, especially with a store-bought pie crust shortcut. We've made pie crust on here before. You can go into the archives and make your own. It's delicious that way. But we're gonna use the roll. We'll do that in just a minute. Makes it super simple, especially when you have a lot of apples to chop. So in my opinion, the hardest part, it's not even hard, it's just, you know, some time, is peeling, coring, and slicing nine apples. I usually do eight or nine apples. It kind of depends on the size. And then let's talk about our apples. I always do a mix. I always do a mix. I lean heavily on Green Granny Smiths. They're my favorite because they're super, super tart. And we're going to put it in here with a whole bunch of sugar and brown sugar and cinnamon. So it's really good to have that bite that's real tart. And that's what I do when I use, you know, that's kind of the reason that I use Granny Smiths. So I use usually five, five Granny Smiths, okay? And then I also like to use a mix of apples. And I love to use a Honeycrisp. This time of year, they're so good. Now Honeycrisps, to me, you know, they can be really big. I've seen some super-sized Honeycrisp apples before that are super, super big. And then I've seen some smaller ones. So kind of depending on the size of the Honeycrisp apple, if they're gi you know, gigantic, then I would probably just get three, two or three. And then if they're not very big, then I might get three or four. It kind of depends. Ultimately, we want to have eight to nine apples. And when in doubt, do nine. Because when the apples go into your pie, and they cook, they're gonna be real piled and tall. But once they bake, they're gonna bake down and your pie's not gonna be as tall. So you don't want your filling to be this tall. You want your filling to be this tall, nice and mounded up in the middle, because it's gonna cook down. So nine apples or so of a little blend. Then, I've got those sliced and waiting over here. Then I'm going to unroll a pie crust that I've allowed to sit at room temperature for a few minutes. And I'm going to just loosen it with my hands a little bit, and I've got a pie dish. now. I've said this before and it's super important for you to remember, all pie dishes are not created equal. There is just this wave in pie dish manufacturing to make deep dish. I think we're just Americans and the bigger the better in our opinion. But most pie recipes do not fill a deep dish pie plate. So don't make the mistake of putting this in something that's two inches tall and 10 inches around because you're gonna have a squatty little pie and nobody wants a squatty pie. And your filling's not gonna go far, your crust isn't gonna stretch, so you want a classic, a classic pie dish, a classic height, um, somewhere between eight and nine inches. I never go any, bit, any larger than a nine inch pie dish, so that's important. And look at this cutie, by the way. 
This is my little pie dish that I have made for my store. My um, little store slogan is love, welcome, serve. It's kind of a hospitality slogan. Oh, it's the name of my cookbook. <laughs> I forgot. And it's the name of my cookbook, love, welcome, serve. Just kind of my little hospitality motto. Isn't that so cute? Love that. Okay. So here we have our pie crust. And we're going to gently set this down inside here. And then if you want to go fancy and crimp and do something cute or do little cutouts, have you seen those like little, almost look like um, little stamps that you can do cutouts and all that. And you can just do whatever your heart desires on your crimp. I am all about a rustic pie and a rustic crimp, partly because I love the look of the homemade and it takes all the pressure off. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to taste good. So I'm gonna go around and just do a little tiny finger pinch. When we come back, we're gonna dress our apples, dump them in our pie, and then make a really delicious Dutch crumb that's gonna go on top. You are gonna love this. Then we're gonna come back and make our sauce. So hang with me today. This is Cooking Today. Welcome back to Cooking Today. We're making a Dutch apple pie today with a salted caramel sauce. Doesn't that sound delicious and fallish? One of my favorites. I absolutely love it, especially for company. You know, fall for us, we have a lot of company come. We have them come for Razorback games or I don't even know what, all kinds of things it feels like. Holidays are right around the corner. So I love to have a good dessert that can kind of double as like maybe breakfast. This feels even a little breakfasty to me because it's apples after all, right? That's healthy. It is. Just with some sugar and some brown sugar <laughs> poured right on top. Delicious stuff. So sugar, brown sugar right on top of our apples. We have our crust crimped in our fun little pie dish here. So I've got my dry right there on my apples. And then I'm gonna squeeze the juice of a lemon on top of my apples. You can measure if you really feel like measuring. Usually about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. I don't think it's too, too much either way. I just kind of look at it in my hand and get an idea of what it, you know, what it is. But that little tart mm, is really good because we're adding warm things like the brown sugar in there. That's really delicious. Okay, then we're gonna do about a teaspoon of cinnamon or so, okay? Does that sound delish? You also, you could do an apple pie spice in here if you just had an apple pie spice. A lot of times apple pie spice is, um, it's usually Vietnamese cinnamon or really good cinnamon and, um, some kind of allspice, maybe some nutmeg. So you could do that. You could throw in a little grated fresh nutmeg or ginger um, in here if you wanted to. It would be delicious. Anything that's warm and fallish in here would be great. Hey, you know what else? I just thought about this. I've even thrown in cranberries in here before. It was awesome. You could also do a mix of apples and pears. Anything that's beautiful and rich and in season right now can go right inside a pie crust with some sugar on it and bake it, really. It is some good stuff. So I'm just tossing these really gently, not for the sake of preserving the apples because they're pretty hearty, but just so that I don't make a big fat mess on TV. <laughs> it would be easy to fling some of this out, wouldn't it? And I'm just getting right down underneath there and making sure that everything is tossed really well, okay? Then, all we're gonna do is take our apples and dump them right in our pie dish. I've seen people go to the trouble of hand laying them in. You just knock yourself out. <laughs> if you wanna do that and make them all pretty like in a sphere or something. I'm an old school girl. I just, like I said, I like it rustic. It's all gonna taste the same. Okay, and this may fall over the sides and that's okay. We're gonna use our hands on cue, right, perfect, I meant to do that. So, you do have to take your hands and use just a little bit of time to kind of tuck them in because you know they're kind of tossed on top of each other and so there might be some holes. We don't want that. And I am just kind of tucking them in. I'm not pressing them, 
but I am making sure that they're, you know, just kind of, you'll see some gapping, big gaping holes and gaps, and you want to be sure to get those filled in, okay? But don't press, because they're going to, you want a little air in there, and they're going to settle down. Now, I love that this is super mounded up really, really high right here in the middle. Isn't that pretty? You know, I would have eaten that one, and I actually thought about it for about one second. Um, so pretty apple pie going in. Then the Dutch part of apple pie that makes it a Dutch apple pie, as opposed to a just a two crust apple pie, is this easy crumb. It's just flour, sugar, brown sugar, butter, cinnamon. The recipe is on our website with all the measurements and all that. Soft butter is key. And then I'm just taking my little dough cutter here, my pastry blender, and giving it a whir until the, the butter kind of breaks up into little bits. And we're gonna make a crumb. This is one of my favorite parts, is putting this crumb on. It's kind of like kitchen crafting, you know? Putting it all on there and making sure that it's all spread out and even and pretty. Okay, I'm giving this a spin. Our apples look delicious. Our oven is preheated to 375. And then, I think that looks pretty good. It kind of looks like a crumbly meal. meal. Okay. Oh, I can't forget. We need to brush our crust, too. I might have forgotten that if I hadn't looked over. We need to brush our crust with um, egg white. We're going to do that in just a second. Okay, here's what we're going to do to get our pie in the oven. We're going to set it on a sheet pan that's bigger than the pie. We're going to make a mess, and it's really fun, and it's just fine. Take our crumb. I like to put it right at the top and then coax it down the sides. We're going to pile our crumb right on top, down the sides, fill in the holes, over to the crust. Make sure everything is nice and covered. Put all the pieces that have fallen off down the sides back up onto the pie. Then, mm, I love this part. Then I'm just going to take my pastry, pastry brush here and go right around the sides of just the outside part of my crust and brush it in butter. I mean, brush it in um, I mean, butter. We wouldn't want butter. Brush it in this little egg so that it browns our crust. We're going to stick it in the oven. That's it. We're going to come back and make our caramel sauce. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. We have an apple pie in the oven, Dutch apple with a beautiful crumb on the top. And we are starting our salted caramel sauce. So we're hoping we can get this to be just right for us on TV because this has got some real specific steps and a timeline. You need to have everything ready to go when you're making salted caramel and you have to be prepared to work quickly, no pausing. So read your directions really well and know what you're doing and it is going to be perfect. You're going to love this. What I've already done in a small pan, we have cream and butter and salt that we have put in a pan and we just heated it enough that the butter melted and that the salt dissolved, okay? And then we pulled that off of our heat and we just want to stir in a teaspoon of vanilla in our cream mixture, okay? And then that can set aside on a high heat, okay? I've got this on a nine. I have cornstarch and sugar and water, okay? And I'm using a silicone spatula because I need to whisk, whisk, whisk. So you really want to try to use something... I've heard both. Not to use metal because it'll actually increase the temperature because it gets hot itself. It increases the temperature of what you're making and you don't want it to change the temperature. So you want to use something that doesn't really, you know, isn't conductive to temperature, doesn't, you know, add heat. So I usually use my silicone whisk. You could also use, well, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I would say use a silicone whisk. My TV show, so that's my opinion, right? So I think you can get these just about anywhere. Now, this is important. We have turned this on, high heat, and it is going to bubble like crazy. Notice, I have my cream mixture in a small pan, but I have this little mixture, y'all. It doesn't fill the bottom of the pan this much. You need a pan that is larger, like this with high sides, because when we pour our cream 
into our hot sugar mixture, it is going to bubble up and boil up like you have never seen and it looks like a science experiment like you know on the Today Show. You know when those people come or Jimmy Fallon they put the um, goggles on, you're gonna think that. But it's not that, but you're gonna think it. So you need a pot that's tall enough with tall enough sides that you can, you have room for the bubble up. Now, what we're gonna do, I'm whisking, but I'm gonna let this sit for a second. I need to watch this. Similar to when you make brown butter or something like that, you're watching for a very specific look in your mixture. So what happens is this gets a real violent bubble, okay? A real violent bubble. And then I just whisk it like crazy. Then you're gonna see it start to kind of settle just a little bit and the bubbles, instead of being big, big, big bubbles, they're gonna get real tight and a little bit smaller in your mix. Okay, so we're watching for that. This is making homemade caramel sauce, aren't y'all? Don't y'all wanna hop in on this? Wouldn't you be really proud to be able to say that you made a homemade caramel sauce? Do you say caramel or caramel? Timmy, what do you say? Caramel. You say caramel, I say caramel. People on Instagram seriously message me sometimes and they say, I love that you say caramel. And I think my best friend from high school said caramel. But that's what we're making, all those. <laughs> all of them, caramel, 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 caramel. Anyway, it's good no matter what, eat it with a spoon. So we're watching, 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 watching. And then what we're gonna do is stir, stir, stir this and then settle and then watch it. And then I'm gonna stir it a little bit and then I'm gonna watch it. And we're looking for it to turn a beautiful amber color, like a really pretty rich color, not dark, because by then it's probably gonna be too high and then you're not gonna have a good creamy sauce. You're gonna have like what you would make a caramel with, like an actual square. So we're waiting for this to get really nice and pretty and a good color on it. Then we're gonna whisk in our cream sauce. So I'm waiting for the moment <laughs> for this to happen. I've turned my heat up just a little bit. We're gonna whisk this in, it's gonna foam up like mad. And then this is why I said you need to be prepared. I use a glass measuring cup, a two cup, because it is heat proof, which is very, very important. This will burn you to pieces. It is scalding hot. Do not lick the spoon. <laughs> Do not put your finger inside this pan and you're gonna be tempted because you've made this beautiful sauce. Do not, do not for whatever reason. It will burn you to pieces. You need a heat proof container. And so once we pour this into here and we whisk it like mad, and we're gonna let it cook, it's gonna boil up, it's gonna settle down. Oh, we're gonna do it here pretty quick. We're gonna boil up, let it settle down. And then we're gonna pour it immediately into this um, container, this heat proof, so that it will not, you know, it will stop the cooking. We are gonna come right back, we're gonna finish this sauce and we're gonna check on our pie and we're gonna call it a day. This is Cooking Today. We're back, are you ready? Here we go. We're gonna whisk, it's turned this beautiful amber color. And we're gonna, here we go. We're gonna turn the heat down to low. And as a matter of fact, I'm on this burner where I can turn the heat completely off, completely off. Because that is so hot in there that it's gonna continue to cook. And we're gonna whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk and you will not believe what this smells like. Whisk and whisk while this just continues to cook itself. And then let's talk about our pie. Isn't it beautiful? Now let's say, remember I told you I was making that beautiful um, pie dish that I was so proud of? I made this one early for the sake of time and I put it in a throwaway pan so that I can share it. Isn't that fun? But look, look at our crust and our filling and that beautiful crumb. And then look at our caramel sauce, y'all. 
One, two, three. It has foamed up. It has settled down. And guess what color it turned? The color of caramel. <laughs> Look at this. Ready? One, two, three. How about that? You are going to want to let this cool for a while, y'all, before you eat, drizzle it on top of your whole pie, serve it on the side. You're going to want to let it cool. Don't lick your pan. And then you can store it in a jar in your refrigerator and just reheat whatever you need whenever you need it. That's all there is to it. Homemade salted caramel sauce that we're going to put all over our beautiful Dutch apple pie. Happy fall. Aren't we so glad it's here? This is cooking today. <laughs>